Kiona Plebes. In this video, I'll be discussing exactly how I studied for my pharmacology class in PA school and how I managed to get A's incorporating my study techniques. Stay tuned. All right, Plebes, welcome back to another video. Again, got the PowerPoint presentation. Let me bring that up and we'll get going, trying to keep in this as concise as possible. Pharmacology is a beast of a class. At UC Davis, pharmacology is only, uh, I think like two units, but in reality, you will be studying, we were studying for this class as much as we were studying for our pathophysiology clinical medicine class. And so one of the hardest things that I kind of had early on was trying to figure out how to balance both classes and, and when to study for one versus the other. If you watch my first video on the study techniques of how I study in PA school, I talk about the interleaving effect. And this was one of the major tools that I used to make sure that, that I wouldn't fall behind on my clinical medicine course versus my pharmacology course. So here in this video, I'm going to dive into specifically what I did, what I used, what resources I used, and uh, how that helped me um, get A's. Again, I'm just going to pop my transcript so that you guys can see the, the grades that I got in pharmacology. So if you can see with the big arrows, those are my pharmacology courses. And I got an A and A, an A minus and uh, A minus. So one of the first things that I kind of realized early on was that a lot of the students around me, and even I was uh, doing this, I was kind of spending a lot of my time gathering and organizing and figuring out, you know, what antibiotic fits in what class and 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 what drug, what does it do and the mechanism of action and making charts and outlines. And, and I realized very quickly that I was spending more time actually gathering and organizing information and not enough time doing active recall of the material. And so the number one tip that I have is you want, you're going to want to minimize the amount of time that you're gathering and organizing and spend more time actively recalling the material. So if your class is anything like mine, our, most of our exams were primarily based out of our lecture slides and anything in those lecture slides could potentially be fair game. And so and what I would do is I kind of realized as our professor was, you know, teaching and stuff that he would mention often, you don't need to know this. Or he would say, you know what, this uh, diagram, it's just for your own information for when you get out into clinical practice, you don't need to know this. And so my tip for you guys is pay attention in class and figure out what you don't need to know. You'll be surprised how many slides and stuff they just say, like, you don't need to know this for the purpose of the exam. So I did want to provide an example of what a, what a typical uh, you know, pharmacology lecture slide can look like. And so this is a very jam-packed one. This is just one I found online. And this is talking about common antibiotic uh, classes. And so let's say in a hypothetical situation, your professor, uh, you would be responsible for knowing all of this, but your professor says, you know what, you're only responsible for the stuff in purple. Sweet. So that just knocked out half of the other things that I, you know, don't need to memorize. So I'm going to focus my time on memorizing and learning the purple stuff, the, the things in purple that just correlates to the, the specific antibiotics that inhibit um, some form of process in protein synthesis to knock out a bacterial infection. So we have things like aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, uh, macrolides, and lic lycosamides. And so what I would essentially do, and I would recommend if you can get in the habit of doing this, do this during lecture. So as your lecture is going through the motion of talking, or if you have the option of skipping class and watching the recording uh, later on, you can do that as well. I found that very useful for me because I sometimes would struggle to to focus in class. And it was also difficult because the, my specific professor, he's super amazing, love him to death. But he would talk very slow. And so being able to speed him up helped me kind of just remain focused. And, and um, yeah, if that's an option for you, I highly recommend that. So we're going to get those lecture slides. We're going to convert them into Anki. For this type of, of uh, class, I would primarily use the image occlusion type card in comparison to pathophysiology, the clinical med courses, I would use the close deletion card. So I'll be showing you guys exactly how I create image occlusion card. And just a reminder, this isn't an end all be all Anki tutorial. This is just me for the sake of time showing you guys exactly how I convert my lecture slides from pharmacology into Anki using the image occlusion tool. Highly recommend you check out Evolving Medic's channel. He has a specific tutorial, which I'll, I'll attach that link down below um, on a step-by-step -step guide to download Anki, use it, put in all the, the options and set it up so that you can use it. And he did a very, very fantastic job of explaining and breaking it down for us. Um, so yeah, check that video out. So here we go. I have, again, I have split screen. I have Anki on the right. 
and my lecture side, just one lecture side on the left. And so the first thing I would want to do is go down here to create deck. We're going to call this antibiotics. Okay. And then it's going to put in alphabetical order. I'll close this down. Antibiotics. We're going to go here. Let it load a little bit. All right. Now we're going to go to add. It's going to pop up this window. I have it already set up, but make sure that you go up to this, uh, in this thing here that says type and make sure that for this specific class, we want to use image occlusion enhanced. And so that's what we're picking here. Image occlusion. Choose. Choose that. Sweet. And then we're going to go to deck and confirm that the cards that we're making are going to be safe to the antibiotics deck. Sweet. So now, now that you you uh, have you know your your thing all set up, ready to go, um, what I want you guys to do and to make this process as quick as possible is again take advantage of your keyboard shortcuts. So whatever way um, is fastest for you to take a screenshot of your lecture slide, that's going to be most ideal. I'll show you what I do. It may you know help you or not. What I set up is to do a screenshot to essentially set this up and, and set this like little cursor where I can take a picture just like this. You're going to go to your uh, system preferences. I got to do some updates and then go to keyboard. You're going to go to shortcuts and then you're going to go to this section here where it's going to say, you're going to have a bunch of stuff here, go to screen shots. And then you're going to set up cop. Uh, I think it's this one copy picture of selected area to the clipboard. And I have that as shift command four. And so what that's going to do is when I take a screenshot, it's going to save it to my immediate clipboard. Um, and you'll see why that is probably the most ideal way to do this. So we go back to Anki. We're going to do, um, I want to take this screenshot to get it into Anki. So we're going to do shift command four, pull up my little uh, cursor. I'm going to take this uh, screenshot here. Just took the picture. Now you're going to go back to Anki and you're going to hit this button here. This button here is the image occlusion button. And because it's in your clipboard, Anki's immediately going to pull it and upload it as soon as you press that button into the image occlusion tool. And so I'll hit here fit to center it. There's also um, a bunch of sh keyboard shortcuts. Again, guys, take advantage of these. R is for rectangle. That's to, to make the image occlusion. And essentially image occlusion is just a box. It's essentially you're covering something up and that's what you're going to test yourself on. So we said, you know, that our hypothetical professor said we have to memorize all the things in purple. So I'm going to, before I uh, do that, I'm going to go to field to make sure that I, uh, that I title this something so that I can search it up later. Antibiotic, uh, I can't even spell antibiotic classes, mechanism of action, MOA. Make sure that that's good down with the decks. Go to mask editor. And now we want to cover up, let's say this here, we're going to go to the box. Or you can also put, press R, and we're going to cover this up. Boom. Okay, so that's going to be a car. That information behind there. And now we want to cover up all of the antibiotics that inhibit protein synthesis. So I'm going to do a box here for aminoglycosides. I'm going to do one here for tetracycline macrolides and for lecosamides. And so now we covered all of these up. If I went down here to hit hide one, guess one, it's going to do a just that, what it sounds like. It's going to hide one of these boxes, and you have to guess what's behind it. If you hit hide all, guess one, it's going to hide all of the boxes that we currently, it's going to present you all of the boxes, and it's going to highlight one of them and tell you, hey, think of the answer behind this, this box. And what I like to do for things that are related or uh, just to make a card uh, have more content is uh, that you can hit this, the, this cursor up here and you're gonna select, left click and select all of the things that are related that you want to group. Right click and go down to group. And so now what we did is we grouped all of these boxes together so that will be just one card. And rather than testing yourself individually on each little box, now we've grouped all of these boxes together and all four of these will appear at the same time. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about in a little bit. I'm going to hit uh, hide all guess one so that it hides everything so that I don't use information over here to guess the answers on the left. And we're going to do just that hide all guess one. It just added two cards right there. And now we're going to go out here and we'll see the cards here. We have the, the slide that we just made. And now this salmon colored box is what we have to guess. And so let me click that. So malt protein. I know the first one's macrolides, antibiotics, leak, cosamides and then tetracyclines and so the answer appeared and that's what's behind that card now let's see the next one the next one is this one on the left i have to think of what inhibits protein synthesis so i know it's macrolides i know it's aminoglycosides i know it's uh 
uh, tetracyclines and uh, I forgot the other one with the L, but you get the idea. You're converting your lecture slides immediately into Anki cards. And essentially your lecture slides are, are flashcards waiting to be uh, made. And you can quickly do this using the image occlusion tool in Anki. And this is also something that you can use for your clinical med course if, if you prefer that. Only reason I use the other type of card, the closed deletion card for clinical med is that copying and pasting it directly allows you to search for keywords. Like if you search up, uh, and let's say like retinal hemorrhage, you'll pull up every card that has to do with the retinal hemorrhage. And so the, it just gives you more flexibility to be able to search up certain things on the fly and essentially have this study and guide within Anki that you can always pull up and, and search term. And so now the third thing that I want to point out is that I would use space repetition and interleaving to memorize in my cards, especially I would uh, interleave, like I, like I said in video one, my cards for, for farm and my cards for pathophysiology. I would take turns, 25 minute study sessions where I go back and forth, back and forth and make sure that I'm giving, you know, every class, especially pharmacology and pathophys, the, the time that they deserve so that, I, you know, I can do well on the exams. So the main test banks I use, so for pharmacology, none. I didn't actually use any practice questions, especially because with pharmacology, it's so uh, lecture, professor, professor, professor specific that using these these test banks like Roche Review and Exam Master would, in my opinion, is, is kind of a waste of time for pharmacology specifically, just because your professors are going to be testing you primarily from the lecture slides. If you guys have uh, any questions and are enjoying this content, go ahead and like and subscribe. So we'll continue going. The next thing is uh, study groups. Just like I would use study groups for pathophysiology, our study group, we would build a Kahoot for farm. Kahoot.com is a free resource where you can uh, build quizzes and our study group would share an account. We would all go in there and uh, write our own questions. And then we would meet up and go through these multiple choice questions. Because just like pathophysiology, pharmacology exams are multiple choice exams. All right. And now one of the huge resources that was super clutch, and, and I highly, highly regard this resource is Sketchy Farm. And the really good thing about Sketchy Farm is that they've done the dirty work of figuring out what the high yield content is. They essentially employ a memorization technique called memory palaces. And so I have some screenshots here of their website. This is uh, sketchy.com. Sketchy turns what you need to know into engaging visual stories that you'll remember forever. And 96% of students who use Sketchy report higher exam scores. I'm part of that 96%. Um, there was times where where I you know, was really, really struggling to, to memorize my Anki cards because they were just so dull and dry. And then I went in and watched these videos and it just made it click and it made me memorize the high yield stuff that my professor ended up testing me on. And so this is just an example. Typically you would have a video with like just a green landscape and none of these like weird caricatures. And they slowly tell this story in each cartoon, each drawing, every object and symbol signify something. So in this specific sketchy uh, sketch, I guess, we're talking about sympathetic transmitters and G protein linked second messengers. Like anything in medicine, like I said before, it's always pricey. This resource has been proven time and time again. It's used by medical students around the world and, and PA students and a lot of PA students in my class who frequently ace their exams. They were using this resource. Um, it is uh, 29 a month for the most popular, the one year plan, in which comes out to around uh, $349. But again, team up with classmates, these types of resources, you can have one single account, but multiple people can use it while you're logged in, kind of like a Netflix account, everyone's sharing it, you can try for free, a, a bonus thing that, that I love. And, and again, I'm, I'm kind of biased is that um, they have Anki cards in the description below, I will be attaching a Reddit link where you can download these specific Anki cards and kind of get started and get an idea of, of what those cards look like. And but after watching those, those, uh, those videos, because this, this is in a video format, you can go and test yourself on that content and solidify it even further with Active Recall, with Anki flashcards. And this is just an overview of the cards that you will get when you download that. Again, in the description below, um, there's cards for pretty much every section, autonomic drugs that affect the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, cardiovascular, renal, um, neuropsych, the antimicrobial, super clutch for if you guys are learning antibiotics and are just struggling to remember, you know, which ones were ceftriaxone belongs to and what uh, an amino, what the amino glycosides are and, and how penicillins interact and, and all of these generations of antibiotics, I highly, highly, highly recommend sketchy 
farm. All right. Last thing is the game plan. I will be showing you guys how I put everything together in preparation for an exam one week out. So again, the more specific you are, the better. And specific means writing out exactly how many Anki cards you're going to memorize, how many you know videos you're going to watch, how many practice exams you're going to do. The more specific you can be, the better you'll be. And so here, this was this was an actual old uh, study plan, game plan that I used for my GI exam, gastroenterology. And so uh, the first thing I want you guys to pay attention is I did, a, again, a macroscopic view. I took a step back and see how many cards do I need to memorize before next Monday, you know, before my, my upcoming exams. And for GI, I believe we had both pathophysiology and pharmacology exams on the same day. And this will happen, guys. During PA school, you need to be prepared to take exams back to back in order to do well you have to organize yourself well to make sure that you designate enough time to each class and so taking a step back we have 505 Anki cards for the pathophysiology of GI and 321 pharmacology cards for for GI as well in total 826 and so I consider the 826 because mentally you need I need to have all of these cards memorized by my exam and so there's no point in me keeping them separate. I want to see the total number of cards that I need to memorize, you know, seven, eight, 10 days from now. And then I do the same thing for my practice questions for the pathophysiology. Um, I have 149 for Smarty Pants, 107 for Rosh Review, 136 for Exam Master, a total of 392 practice questions. Um, and again, these practice questions are to prepare me primarily for my pathophysiology exam. Uh, not pharmacology. The Anki cards created from the lecture slides for pharmacology will be the bulk of the studying that I would uh, do. Now, the actual days and, and the detailing of how I distributed it will start from the, the actual exam day. So on Tuesday, the 22nd of, I forgot what month I had my exam day planned. On the 21st, that Monday, I plan to review all of my farm Anki cards, all 300, and all of the exam questions that I got wrong, all wrong exam questions. And so on Sunday, I'm doing 150 Anki cards and 68 exam questions. These are exam questions from um, exam master. And I pretty much, as you can see, I, I, I do that essentially every day because I have 800 cards. I need to learn 150 new cards each day. I think on Tuesday, I did a little bit more. I did 300 cards. And then I was doing all of my, my practice questions and then dividing and conquering. So you guys get the idea. This is essentially the more specific that you can be the better you will be to, to, to conquer everything that you need to do and also to give yourself that balance to take some time off, to go to the gym, to you know hang out with friends and family. So that's pretty much all that I have for pharmacology. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I appreciate your guys' support and you know love interacting with you guys. I'll, I'll catch you guys soon. Saludos, plebes.